Buck Butcher, the funniest man from Wisconsin. There you have it. Let us keep the show going. Our next uh, comedian actually is performed at uh, Don't Tell Mama, 55 uh, Grove Street, the duplex. In front of 1,600 people recently, the Acapulco Princess, he makes his living as a comedy and food writer. Put your hands together for Dan Perlman. Yeah. Evening. I grew up in a family. Does this happen to anybody else? <laughs> Amazing experience to live through, isn't it? Remember family vacations? There's a contradiction in terms. Why do parents put us through this nightmare? In endless hours, locked up in a cramped rear seat, nothing to do but count license plates. Nothing to listen to on the way out, but our parents arguing about whose relatives are more obnoxious to visit. <laughs> Nothing to listen to on the way back, but our parents arguing about whose lousy idea this all was anyway. <laughs> they do this to us, and then they wonder why we put them in nursing homes. <laughs> <laughs> I came from a big family. Statistically speaking, that meant somebody in the family had to turn out gay. We had a family meeting and voted. It was unanimous. <laughs> it's a big responsibility being gay. I, I try to live up to the ideals, but I just don't like opera. I saw The Wizard of Oz once. Never seen Dark Victory. I've never seen Gone with the Wind. I can't do imitations of Betty Davis, Catherine Hepburn, Mae West. I don't look good in a pink Angora sweater. And I don't drink Shibley. I like beer, Monday night football. Basically, if anyone's interested, I'm a cheap date. I've got a special phone line for my parents to call me. It has a recorded message. Hello, this is your son. If you're calling to offer me more advice on my career, press 1. <laughs> if you're calling to once again set me up on another date with the rabbi's daughter, Miriam, <laughs> press 2. If you're calling to complain that you don't have any grandchildren, press 3. And if you're calling to offer me my inheritance while I'm still young enough to enjoy it, please hold to a personal <laughs> service representative. Families are a great place for sex education. The birds and the bees. This is a relevant sort of metaphor. Bees. The male bee spends his whole life building up to this ultimate experience. The night when he loses his virginity and dies. <laughs> and the female bee, the queen's sluts is more like it. One drone down, they're on to the next one. And then there's the birds. Did you know that birds have sex once a year? And when aroused, the male bird's sexual organ enlarges up to 300 times. Eight inches doesn't look all that impressive anymore, does it? Speaking of eight inches, I've been thinking a lot recently about condoms. It used to be really simple. Just fill it up with water and throw it out my dorm window. <laughs> now I'm expected to wear one. Yeah, and you have to pick out the kind you want. They have fashion trends. They come in colors. I consider it the jungle green. The green makes me look pale. Yeah. And flame red, too flashy. I went with the steel blue. I think that says it all. <sighs> then there's the glow-in-the-dark condoms. Personally, I know where it is. I have no trouble finding it. And I figure, if my partner is having trouble finding it, I don't need to be sleeping with someone who still needs a nightlight. <laughs> You ever think about the sex lives of your favorite superheroes? I do. <laughs> Superman? 
think we need to be concerned about a guy who spends his days taking his clothes off in phone booths. <laughs> Batman and Robin? Think about it. <laughs> Got two bachelors living in a house together, no girlfriends in sight, and they're running around in leather and tights. <laughs> Do we have to spell this out for anybody? <laughs> then there's Wonder Woman. This lady runs around in red leather, spiky old boots, a tiara, and a magic rope at her side. Do the words Show World and 42nd Street come to mind? <laughs> then there's The Flash. Bet he's a lot of fun in bed. It's <laughs> over. <laughs> You know, sex with other people is just too much trouble. So I've turned to pets for companionship. <laughs> and I'm allergic to dogs and cats, so I got guppies. I read that the movement of the fish is supposed to bring peace and tranquility to your mind. Mine ripped each other to shreds. I was on edge all the time. So I got a bird, a parrot, someone I could talk to. And I taught it to, you know, I, I couldn't afford one at a pet store, so I bought one from a guy at the Brooklyn shipyards. And I taught it to say all the good things like, have a nice evening, thank you for coming, good, good night. Couldn't get it to stop saying all that sailor stuff, though, like, nice ass. And roll over, it's your turn to be the woman tonight. <laughs> I gotta get back to something I said earlier. I was talking about I'd only seen The Wizard of Oz once. I realize it's a lot of people's, a special movie for a lot of people, but see, I felt for The Wicked Witch of the West. Admittedly, she's ugly. Admittedly, she's green. But this woman, her sister, The Wicked Witch of the East, has just been flattened by a house that flew in on a tornado from Kansas. And then some bitch in a bubble comes along, zaps her shoes off, and gives them to the girl who just killed her, and everybody throughout the rest of the movie is running around going, why is she being so nasty? <laughs> and then it's like that little munchkin convention, hundreds of Dr. Ruths running around <laughs> all over the place. Before the show, somebody asked me why I like to do stand-up comedy. Well, basically, because it's more gratifying than sex. I mean, with stand-up comedy, you don't mind if the people watching you laugh. So thanks for being very gratifying. Dan Perlman. Yeah.